So here we are with another video. Now, of course, it is is the national break this week. There's no match preview, but I do have some Sunday news to bring you from the past week. I've also got some EFL news to share with you. So you know, stay tuned to the end of the video to hear that information. But in Sunday news, so it's been announced today that Jack Clark has won the EFL Championship Player of the Month for September. So well done, Jack. Fully deserved. He starts in September with amazing six goals in five games, um, matched with some you know fantastic performances as well. And it's it's, it's well deserved. Tony Mowbray was interviewed today, and he's kind of just echoed them to see a Jackson outstanding footballer. He's had a great month in September. He's full of confidence. He's flying at the minute. He's absolutely delighted for him. His career at the moment is on the up and up. The challenge is now for Jack to keep it going and keep on and keep being a bit more consistent. Clark himself did say he's delighted to, to win the award. But for him, it's a reflection on how well the team's done in September. He's lucky to have been on the end of some great moves and the team playing well as a, as a whole. Got a good understanding. And Tony Mowbray does give him the freedom to express himself you know, and, and just do what Jack Clark does. So we're hoping to try and build on a solid start of the season. So well done, Jack. You know, fantastic in in in, um, in September. But like I've mentioned on other videos, if he continues to perform like that, then come January we're going to struggle to keep hold of him. Now I have seen in social media some bits and pieces where it's apparently been said we'll accept fifteen million pound for him, but surely that's that's got to be wider than mark. You know, based on what some of the prices, what some of the players have gone for in in the summer, like Ellis Sims for ten million pound at Coventry. Surely fifteen million pounds just a drop in the ocean, especially if he keeps on this form until then. So, and the January prices are all are all so, you know, inflated as well. So for me, anything less than twenty five million should just be you know, jogged on really. Um, but not to watch this bit in January and you know see how we get on. In other news at the club, it's been announced Leo Perlman has been appointed in the on one of the club's board of directors. Now, if you don't know who, who he is, Leo Perman is the co-founder and managing partner of, a, of a, the production company Fullwell 73. Led by Perlman, the company that are also currently spearheading uh, a proposal with Kane International to build a major film studio in summer that will bring you know loads of jobs and massive money to the area. So well, let's hope that comes off for everybody in the region. He's a lifelong Sunland fan. He has worked with KLD over with some projects in the last couple of years. If you remember, Fullwood 73 are also behind the Sun Until I Die Netflix series. So does that mean series 3 is going to be on its way? We'll have to wait and see. Watch this space. Me personally think it's a fantastic appointment. You know, to have a lifelong fan who gets the fans, knows the city and knows what football means to everybody in the region on the board who can influence them decisions moving forward so well done KLD now I've got some sad news to bring you from Sun and Women Captain Kira Ramshaw unfortunately is going to have to retire at the age of 29 after spending her whole career on Wearside she is the club's longest serving player after making 244 appearances in a 14 year spell she is actually only one of two women to have played over 200 games for SAFC women, along with former skipper Stephanie Bannon. She has been captain since 2018 and has also won various you know, awards during that time, including Ladies Player of the, of the Year Award, National League Player of the Year Award. So she's had a, a great career at Sunderland. Um, the women's physio, Hayley Arnold, said she initially sustained a, a medial ankle sprain with a fracture during pre season in 2022. She did return to play after three months in some rehabilitation, but unfortunately in October the same year, she suffered a second ankle injury to the ligaments that did require surgery. Unfortunately, Kira's problems are that complex and, un and the treatment available to her, the effects of that is going to mean that she'll no longer be able to continue her career, which is a massive blow to, to Sunderland and to Kira personally. Kira said she was, if she looks back to where it started when she was 16, the feeling of being called up to the, the first team squad was an amazing achievement. She's been lucky enough to be part of the team for 14 years. 
Um, he's had two promotions, won the League Cup, you know, lots of things that they've achieved in that time. Now she's done a full circle with the club. It's it, She described it as being a journey and a half. Um, current women's head coach, Mel Rea, the news of Kira's retirement, you know, has made her feel very, very, very sad. Hard to put into words the contribution that Kira's made over the years. Uh, the best way to sum it up is, is that she believes that Kira is the most important player to, to have ever worn the red and white stripes of the lasses. You know, that's certainly high praise indeed. Um, Kira is the role model that every young female footballer across Sunderland should aspire to be and can only hope that we can now utilise her stellar experience and leadership skills with the next generation in our pathway. SEFC General Manager Alex Clark said, we are extremely disappointed for Kira that she's had to retire. The club will continue to support her off the field and it's great that she's staying around the club in other roles. They're going to host a testimonial for her next year. You know, she's been a great servant and the whole club, you know, wish her the best in her retirement and hopefully she can stay on and have a great coaching career or whatever she decides to do. But it's great that the club is supporting her. So all the best, Kira. Um, I hope it all works out for you. Now, at the start of the video, I did see I've got some EFL news to bring you. Now, it is like kind of indirectly linked to us um, because there's a certain bearded businessman back in the news. Yes, so William Story is apparently heading a consortium worth 50 million quid to buy Redden Football Club. Now, who knows if it's true? You know, we know the saga that went on with us at the time. But he has been tweeting and retweeting things about Redden, quite similar to what he did with us. But I just thought when I heard the news, now can you imagine if it's true and he goes there and turns them round and starts spending millions of pounds, you know, how many of us will have egg on our face and be like, oh, he actually was serious. Let me know what your thoughts are that on below. <laughs> I can't see it personally. You know, we know what he's like, but we'll have to wait and see. So if you like the video, hit the subscribe button, watch this video from me next, watch this one what YouTube recommend after. Until the next time, thanks for watching, take it easy, stay safe and we'll speak soon. Ta-ra.